Okay, good. So, so, so this was this going not not that very very computer science, right? And and to be honest, I'm very new into this like S bomb stuff. Uh, probably like I don't know, maybe less than six months, something like that. Uh, I have a background in computer science as well, but my 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 my, my current current uh, 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 PhD thesis topic it's more about uh, laws, and and basically this uh, like today talk is about like how I'm trying to convert this. I don't know, like this. This is actually from the draft of the EU AI Act <laughs> into <laughs> something like more structured, right? More uh, machine readable or, or more machine actionable, right? like like this, right? Let Let's see, right? Right? Uh, 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 how far we can go? So uh, I just take this from the uh, Linux Foundation website, and the things I'm going to focus today is this part. The accountability part, which is which is like uh, one of the many things, right? That like people aim for today is for a trusted, like trustworthy AI system. So, what is accountability? There's a, a there's a lot of definitions, right? Uh, like from political science, from from ethics, from everywhere. Uh, also, including those like uh, corporate governance as well. So, but but basically, uh, if we start from from here, right? There are someone trying to do something, right? The actor uh, uh, carry out the conduct, right? And if we just let the actor do whatever, right? Uh, uh, whoever has the power will tend to be corrupt, right? So we say, okay, you should actually act accountable to to someone, and we call that someone a forum. And things that the forum do is basically making a judgment uh, on that conduct, right? And then, yeah, there should be some standards. There should be some incentive or you know things like that. So, so there are more and more stuff uh, in the diagram, right? So we have actor uh, who act accountable uh, to the forum uh, in regards to to uh, uh, when they carry out some conduct, right? And when uh, the forum make a judgment, there should be some standards. And so, so that's that's the the that sentence probably like sum up uh, our working definition of uh, accountability: who is accountable to whom for what, uh, by which standard, and why. All right, this those like obligations, and these are examples. You you can just like the slide is there in 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 that platform chat. You can. I think it's pretty small. Yeah, you can just take a look there. But basically, uh, today we will focus on standards, right? Uh, I'll just skip this. Uh, okay, we we talking about definitions, right? But why we have to have this accountability in the first place, right? Uh, uh, I will take an example from the uh, public accountability point of view. Basically, those public services, right, or uh, like like uh, services that delivered by the government or on behalf of the government, or things that like we see as a as a public goods, things like that. Uh, or sometimes it can be services that run by private sector as well, but it's really important. It's kind of like uh, critical infrastructure, telecom, uh, pipe waters, things like that, right? So basically, uh, this guy, Bowens and his friends, right, proposed that, okay, there are, there are going to be at least uh, three perspectives, right, that, uh, to answer why we need the public accountability in the first place. The first perspective, it's about popular control, right? Uh, you're doing something uh, on behalf of the people, right? So that, that it it will uh, some something about like popular control. And the next perspective is like uh, it's to prevent the corruption or, or abuse of power. And the last perspective is to maximize public, public value, right? And if we try to map. Those buzzwords or research, right? Uh, in computer science, computer science people, right? Uh, now today, in like for example, if if you go to the ACM fact FACCT conference, right? You see a lot of these words, right? Explainability, explainability, right? Human oversight by as uh, uh, model drift or uh, concept drift, data drift, like detection. Somehow those research and measures can be mapped into this perspective as well, right? For example, the reason that we try to detect this bias and, 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 and drift, right, 
it's because uh, our judgment about the world, right? In this case, the, it's uh, based on the uh, uh, the data in the past, right? Maybe it's okay for today, right? But maybe uh, the data, uh, the data that we use to produce the model that we use today, right? Is actually the data from 20 years ago, right? Uh, it's maybe going to work for the next five years, but maybe not the next 10 years, right? So uh, it means it's probably uh, maybe, maybe not really abuse of power in this case, but there are some corrupt uh, uh, decision, let's say, right? So we want to detect that, right? And a lot of people work on that. Uh, so, so that's why basically, right, uh, uh, we need the public uh, accountability. And with that, I think we are in this area of uh, how to say. Uh, if you either, for example, right, those those detection of the model drift or, or data drift or, or concept drifts, right, it's very much affects the accuracy, right. So, so if you think accountability, so, so, so this is like these people propose this like separation again, right? They are like from political science. So on one, on one side, we can thinking uh, about accountability as a virtue, as something from inside our behavior, right? And in the AI context, it's like if we try, if we have some specification, right, about uh, what should our system sh uh, 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 should behave, right? We can detect if it's a little bit brief from that specification, right? So there was uh, 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 measures will be categorized uh, uh, on this side, accountability as a virtue. But then there are things that uh, on the accountability, on, on the algorithmic side alone uh, cannot be done, right? And I will lead to the next slide. Basically, we call that uh, 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 accountability as a mechanism, right? So we focus, we not focus on the behavior, but focus on the governance of the behavior, right? About uh, technical documentation, about quality management, uh, things that not really about the behavior itself, right, of, of, of individuals, but more of the structure, how to govern the, the behavior of, of those individuals. Uh, so in this way, we can think about uh, account accountability, right? As uh, uh, like one way to think about uh, accountability in this sense, it's to asking for uh, information from those who are trying to conduct something, right? So this is this is basically like uh, uh, this slide is basically the information obligations from the EU Act, right? I just like uh, to few of them, right? Uh, on the left-hand side, it's about it's, it's, uh, information obligation for the provider who is going to provide the high-risk AI system, right? And on the right-hand side, it's for the provider is who is going to provide the general purpose AI models, right? Uh, some things, a lot of them is actually quite similar, uh, but some of them, uh, it's actually a little bit different. For example, if you look at the intended Propose, right? So in the high-risk AI system, uh, the law actually asks the provider to provide the internet purpose, basically uh, uh, advertise this to, uh, to the public, so the public can know in advance and decide whether they can they use that or not, or, or if they like to monitor this specific uh, 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 high-risk AI system or not. But basically, uh, they, they call it intended use. But for the general purpose AI model, they, they have something similar, but they call it intended tasks. Uh, example for this is like the intended tasks, it's facial recognition. But the intended purpose, it's maybe facial recognition for authorization or for access control, right? So, so you can have, so, so the general purpose AI model can categorize, can predict, can do whatever, right? But it's up to the AI deployer who are going to choose who, who are going to use that uh, ability for a specific purposes, right? So the provider of the general purpose model will not know in advance 
uh, of this intended purpose. So that's why the uh, information obligation are different, right? For for different uh, providers. Two minutes stuff. But basically, uh, uh, this is all of these uh, information obligations. Uh, uh, you can see it appears across the EU AI Act, right? And if we uh, look at this uh, life cycle. I, I, I took this slide from, from the full deck uh, produced by AI uh, data and robotics ecosystem, which is like another uh, EU funded uh, project. I, I also like contribute a little bit uh, 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 there as well, but very minimum. But basically, uh, at each point, it will ask different kind of uh, information for different purposes. For example, at the uh, development stage, right? It will focus on the, uh, for example, instruction of use. It should be clear, right? Uh, the design of the uh, uh, UX, right? If you're going to use AI for some system, right? That's like saying the law. Uh, you should uh, tell the user that they are now actually interact with the AI and not the human. Things like that, right? So these are the design uh, development, right? And before you can place, which I'm going to like uh, uh, go into the detail in the next slide, it's like before. So this is the development cycle, right? You do test, do whatever, and you're going to deploy and put it, uh, uh, place it onto the market. At this point, you have to register it. If if your AI system is considered a high risk AI system, right? You have to register it with a database. It can be national one, it can be a uh, supranational one, which in this case is the EU, right? But to decide where to go, it's actually very complicated. <laughs> I would skip this one because you all know about this. <laughs> okay, I will focus on this case. There are actually a lot of use cases, right? That, that you can use this uh, software, uh, view of material, and also different uh, information. For for uh, in order to comply with the law, right? Uh, uh, but today I will just focus with the the, the first two uh, uh, bullets, right? The first one is to register, right? So so from the last slide, right? Before you can actually uh, put your service or your product in, onto the market, you have to if if your uh, AI system is actually a high risk one, right? You have to register first uh, in, into the database, or before you uh, decide to to uh, put your product right onto the market, maybe you want to test it in the real world condition first, right? So in that case, you need to, to get the permission as well, and you actually, and uh, in order to doing so, you have to prepare some uh, documentation information as well. So basically, it's it's the diagram on the right hand side. I will zoom it in here. If you actually read the <laughs> regulation itself, the draft one uh, at the moment, right? But I think it's going to be pretty much uh, similar uh, in, in, in the, its final form. It's very really complicated because uh, the requirements and obligations for providers and deployers are like scattered around in different articles. And you actually have also to read the annex as well. There are different annexes, right? Uh, and it's actually really difficult to work with. So uh, what I'm trying to do is that uh, in these two use cases, right, the first one is uh, basically the, the main one is Article 51. It's about uh, the registration into the uh, EU, dat EU database, right, uh, uh, before placing on the market or putting into service. And the right-hand side, it's about the uh, testing in the real-world uh, uh, conditions. If you just follow this flow chart, right, you ask some question, right, or some, I think, I think people in the ontology world call it the uh, uh, competency questions, right? So if you just ask this, right, whether, like, for, for example, does your system is listed in the Annex 3 or not, right? This is, this is quite straightforward because, like, in the Annex 3, it just lists down uh, the, uh, its uh, uh, categories of AI systems, right? So you check with the list. If it's, a, well, it's, it's not in the list, so no registration, right? If it's in the list, check again if it's the uh, point two or not. 
if it's in point two, you don't actually have to go to the EU level. You just go to the national level, All right? And so on, right? Uh, there are in the EU EU database itself. There are two parts. One is the public section. Another one is non-public section. The non-public section uh, will be used for the uh, how to say the applications that yes it is high risk right and the public should uh, uh, know about it let's say right but because of the application is about law enforcement migration they say they, they think this is quite sensitive right so they say okay uh, we should put it somewhere right in the database but uh, it will be non-public and only the uh, national uh, competent authority and the European Commission can access this data. It will be there, right? But it will be non-public, right? Uh, so, so this is, uh, on this part, it's about, uh, it's, it's only like four questions, right? And you can now decide, right, uh, where to go, right? Register or not at the national level or not, or, or, or the EU level, right? And it's going to be in the public section or non-public section. Same kind of questions as well, right, for, for testing, right? And after you know, right, uh, which part of the database to go, there will be another thing, right, uh, uh, as a provider or as an AI provider, right, or as an AI deployer, uh, that you like to know is, okay, what are the information I actually have to submit into these databases, right? Uh, and the answer is here, right? Uh, so it depends on the classification, right? Uh, and the informational items to go to those sections of the databases here. So, so, you, as you can see here, we don't have the information items for the national database because uh, in the EU AI Act, it just said that uh, for the AI system that is in the uh, Annex 3.2, which is about critical infrastructure, something that's actually very specific to uh, uh, that member state, right? You don't have to go to the EU level, right? And it just it just say that, right? It's up to each member state to decide, right? So it's it's all like like not available, right? I mean, it's it, it does it doesn't uh, specific in in the in in the uh, EU level uh, regulation, right? So so this table we we all only discuss about uh, which information item. I I just say uh, uh, this is not the full list, right? As as you can see from 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 the uh, item numbers, this is not the full list. I just show you like some examples. Also, uh, after you know that, okay, uh, which part of the EUA database, right, whether it's like public or non-public, you, you have to go to, uh, you know about which information items, right, that you actually have to submit. There are different players, different stakeholders to get involved here as well. Some information you can get from the provider, but some information you can get from the deployer, right? So this table will just tell, tell you, uh, uh, who should take responsibility uh, in which part. Uh, I try my best, but because Kate is here, <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, I think it's a good news, right? Uh, uh, it just announced, right? I think like this morning, right? The, the SPDX 3.0, right? We have the AI and data profile. Some of this information, Right, can be captured by SPDX already, right? Uh, which is a good news, right? Because like that's that means part of the work uh, 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 in order to comply with at least these two use cases. It's kind of like uh, maybe half done. Maybe well, it's not that easy, but like at least uh, uh, there's somewhere to start. But of course, uh, something that very specific to to the EU, right? Of course, it's, it's, it's not there yet. And I think that's maybe the, the, the way forward for, for the next version uh, to be discussed uh, in, in, in the AI S-BOM, uh, in SPDX, and also else, else, elsewhere as well. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, 
uh, I think we have, oh, okay, 18 minutes, right? I'll just show you like quickly uh, the, uh, so based on that, right, uh, try to come up with, uh, with a taxonomy, right, as in the title. Uh, like compile all, 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 all well not all some some of those informational items right and try to give uh, them names right so we can actually make a reference and and, and talk basically talking about the same stuff right with with this standardized term. Uh, it's here. So, I mean, if if you like, you can go to. Oh, sorry. I'll just, I'll just put the, the, so this is the link. Uh, if, if you can, if, if you have your own device, you can, you can go to this link and see uh, some of the uh, taxonomy that uh, uh, I uh, try to compile, right? For example, uh, we're talking about, we're talking a lot, right? I mentioned a lot about uh, AI deployer and AI provider, right? As a, uh, like two of the stakeholders. So it's like defined here. Uh, we're talking about, I think, things that people uh, really care about. Uh, it's like, for example, this like fundamental rights impact assessment, right? Which is like part of the uh, uh, documentation that you, you have to uh, uh, submit, right? And interestingly, uh, this concept maybe, uh, I mean, from, from it, its name, right? The fundamental rights actually like a little bit linked to, to the uh, EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, but this kind of impact assessment, it's, uh, it's not specific to, to any region, right? For example, uh, there's a proposal as well in the US, like here, uh, at least, I'm not sure like uh, the, uh, its status at the moment, but there, there's, there's a bill called Algorithmic Accountability Act of 2023, right? also mentioned about the submission of this impact assessment documentation as well before you can actually put your uh, product into the market, right? So if you have interest, uh, 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 all the reference to, to these uh, different regulations uh, are also available uh, in uh, each of the definitions uh, of, the, of the terms here, right? You, so you can just go to that, uh, uh, this link later. Uh, the next thing I like to show is like based based on uh, this uh, taxonomy, right? Uh, try to come up with to say, okay, then how you can actually use it, right, in your code. Uh, so I come up with a toy library, <laughs> uh, which can be like embarrassing, like uh, 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 considering like uh, a lot of like uh, uh, hardcore software engineers are in, also in the room as well. So I just like take example from uh, MLflow, right? Uh, some of them and, and modify it a, it a little bit to uh, use the taxonomy, right? That I defined uh, previously. Uh, basically, it will provide this uh, kind of Constants, like in, in, in the case of, of the uh, uh, like Python, right? And you can use this together with the uh, ML4 uh, function, whether it's a, a log param or log metric or, or set tag, right? And after you uh, run this, right, uh, it will appear here. Uh, so so uh, some of you may, may already uh, use ML flow or, or other uh, logging uh, platform, right? So in the case of ML flow, uh, after we put that uh, code and run it, right, those set tag will appear here, right? AI deployer is who, AI, AI provider is who, uh, autonomy type, uh, whether it's like user sensitive personal information or not, right? So uh, everything is actually come, come from this code. And because uh, ML flows actually provide you uh, it's basically a, a key value database. You can also search, right, based on that uh, tag as well. So in this case, I say like, okay, let's list everything that, every model that used uh, sensitive personal information, right, or the one that doesn't use it, something like this, right? So 
this is like based on the uh, existing functionality of of the ML flow, right? Uh, uh, but we just use a standardized terms, right? So like uh, different teams can like talk the same language, basically. Uh, I think that's probably pretty much. Uh, we probably have time to discuss something. Uh, let's see if anything I have it. Yeah, that's 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 what I, I have shown, right? Uh, so basically, everything is summing up here. It's like so. So we going back to that uh, accountability uh, perspective, right? Basically, the purpose why we need accountability in the first place, and I think uh, for different perspective, right? We of course have uh, different measures, different tools, right? Uh, and then for that. If we have some standards, if we can have some specification, right? Uh, I think it will be easier for all of us, right, to work together, right? And the thing that I just show, it's only this part, right, about the uh, database, or, or about the technical documentation, basically those like informational uh, obligation things, right? But there are still actually a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, I mean, if you have interest, anyone, right, to work on as well. For example, on the incident reporting, right? Uh, maybe we can take example from those security uh, community as well, right? It's 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 not really there yet, like uh, for AI, right? But this is actually a requirement as well, uh, at least in the EU context. If uh, if there's a serious incident happens, right? How are you going to report that? And also, uh, the record keeping, right? Uh, uh, for each transaction, like each decision, right? Uh, everything will be there, and that's all. Uh, questions? <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, actually, like the 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 definition that I use actually come from I triple E. Yeah, this one. Yeah. I think I think maybe it's difficult to just like take the whole. I mean, if if you talk the 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 EU one, right? I think maybe it's difficult to take the whole regulation, and uh, maybe we can go by use cases, right? For example, like like if 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 we go back to this this uh, life cycle, right? And we take like uh, yeah, like each stage, maybe it's more doable, yeah. That again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The life. Oh, oh, you mean the SPDX life cycle, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to look into that, but I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm not really understand it that much. Yeah. You, you, you mean those like bill profile and things like that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's 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 like a monster. Uh, the, the the more the more you're looking into it, it's it's like <laughs> expand, expand, expand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks.
for coming. <laughs> I think, yeah, we are good on time. Anything from the back? Uh, I think we have like five minutes. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's grab snacks, drinks, whatever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>